Like I kept waking up right in the middle of the night, sweating, like um, just profusely sweating. And I remember thinking, why is that happening? I've got this must be the cancer. And then I stopped eating garlic butter chips at 11 o'clock at night, every night. And I stopped sweating. In a world desperate to tear itself apart, only one man and some other people stand in the way of total destruction. Together they will right the wrongs, make bad, good, and single-handedly destroy evil, together. Who is this man you may ask? This man is Jeff. Hello and welcome to this episode of Jeff Jones and Friends Make It Better. The show that takes one of life's little annoyances, gives him a microphone, a guest and a podcast, and the unwavering ego to believe he can make everything better. Today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by comedian Nathan Eagle. Nathan, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. How are you, Jeff? I am very well, although I'm not wearing my glasses, and I, I don't know why... We've, we've been talking for a while and I just had this massive panic that I'd forgotten your name. I like, because I can't see oh, it on the oh, screen. It's so weird. I literally just had <laughs> the same friend. I had to look down oh. and see Jeff. Jo I had the exact same friend. That's literally, great. I was like, oh, don't forget, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we've, we've been talking about this for about the last two months. And it's like, I know, oh my yeah, God, yeah, yeah. what's his name? No. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you're, you're okay. <laughs> He's just known as the testicle guy. He's, He's the, the testicle guy. <laughs> He's the, test the testicle guy. <laughs> it's, it's my, literally my, my second favourite pair of testicles. Um, <laughs> which which the context <laughs> of that will become clear. Uh, so, Nathan, look, uh, you're, okay. you're a comedian, podcaster. Before we get into what we're making better, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am a comedian based in Gosport, which is right opposite Portsmouth gospel is kind of like Portsmouth as Portsmouth's abandoned child. <laughs> uh, I live there and I, I gig around Portsmouth, Bournemouth, everywhere, all sorts of places. And uh, do you want me to tell my socials and shit like that? I tell, we'll get first a bit of social very quickly because uh, you're a very funny guy and what we're talking about is very important and you talk about it on your socials. So, yes, here's for your socials. Uh, Nathan Eagle on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. It's Nathan Eagle on YouTube. Nathan Eagle on Instagram. I am shamefully, I am on TikTok. But I don't really post that much on there. But uh, yeah, I'm on everything as Nathan Eagle. Very original name. And yeah, that's me. Yeah, so you're lucky, like Eagle, as I said. My name's Jeff Jones. Full name Jeffrey Jones. I shouldn't be a podcaster. I should be a, an accountant with probably a porn addiction. Like that's that's what Jeffrey yeah, Jones sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Like Nathan yeah. Eagle, you sound dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is with Jeff Jones, like before this podcast, I we'd never met mm. and I was not surprised you were white. <laughs> <laughs> was not surprised. One bit, one bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. White, heavy set, glasses, <laughs> grey and hair from a, an early age. That's, yeah. Yeah. Very small penis. Like that's yeah. just, that's what Jeff Jones sounds oh, like. Oh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that. Oh. <laughs> but you just it's a good thing you very much suit your name you suit your name mm. which is a good thing yeah okay considering how negatively i just spoke about my name that's 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 an odd comment to make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but <laughs> thank you i think uh david no, no we're we're here just just oh <laughs> so you're also so we've had um sanjay and hetty both on the podcast and you are the the third person oh, yes of the um uh how obsessed are you podcast how obsessed are you uh, yeah which is available on youtube yeah. and spotify and wherever you get your podcast that's what you've got to say. <laughs> I, I don't even listen yeah, to yeah. hetty's uh episode if you listen to sanjay's he did the worst job ever of kind of promoting <laughs> it's, it's it's almost but like he's, he's like he, he was, he was a stand-in for Sanjay, and they're like, I was like, right, I tell us about the podcast, and he just had to kind of make it up. Like, yeah, he had no idea. No, he doesn't know what he's on. doing. Yeah, so yeah, I had yeah. to get you guys yeah. on to um, to make up for it. Hetty did a very good job, so hopefully people will listen to her. And yeah. then, or I can, I, yeah, she's the, 
Hetty's like the most, I think, the one who's got, she's the best at sort of describing what it is, I think. Yeah. Whereas me and Sanjay, we just turn up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So Sanjay's, Sanjay's was talking more about the, um, was it the, the farting ghost in the shed? Oh, yes, the stinky ghost. Stinky yeah, ghost, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so everyone check out those. It's it's, it's very funny. Uh, the the three of you together, it's, it's absolute uh, carnage. And actually, it's one of the few podcasts I, I would watch on YouTube because the way you three, just the 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 body kind of reactions to each other. Is, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> like you can you can watch it on mute well, it is... and still find it funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very Lord of the Rings, isn't it? <laughs> Because you've got like, it is, isn't it? You've got like Sanche, he's like the big orc, and then just me and Messi. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, but hang on. So, what you, Sanche's the orc. What What are you guys? I, I've never seen Lord of the Rings, so I don't know. It's a reference. What would it be? With, with, you're with definitely, uh, you're definitely Harry Potter then. And, um, oh. H- Hetty is <laughs> Cat- Katniss Everdeen. Um, that's... <laughs> yeah. uh, all okay. right. Yes, right. Back to the genitals. Uh, we are here talking about uh, about actually something very important, something very serious. Um, but Nathan, what is it that we are making better today? We are going to make better uh, 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 testicular cancer awareness. I suppose that's what we're going to make yeah. better awareness. I think we're going to do the... it, Jeff. We're going to do it. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna talk balls. Gonna do we're gonna make pe- yeah. sure other people talk balls, and uh, but you yeah. yeah this this comes from yeah a place of of yeah as a personal place for you right so so tell us about your situation. I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Uh, five oh it was when was it? Oh, it was last year. It was in uh, was it November? It was my, oh, I don't remember when I was diagnosed. I kind of blanked it out. It was last year, at the end of last year, and I had my left testicle removed five days before Christmas. Wow. I had it removed. And, um, yeah, they took my testicle. Didn't let me keep it. I was going to say, did they gift wrap it? No. Oh. I, thought, I thought that was like a shame because I was going to pop it in someone's cracker. Thought it'd be yeah. a bit <laughs> fun. <laughs> so they didn't let me keep it. Put it on top of the tree. You, no. it, I don't know if you're married, Nathan, but it would have been great in a little ring box, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. Tiffany's on it, a little Tiffany's box, and give it to the missus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, she she's actually she's actually happy that it looks different down there. Uh, okay. Like in in her own, and this is genuine. What she said in her own words, she said it's more manageable. <laughs> 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 But I mean, that's yeah. that, that's a confidence boost. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, we, we will get back onto the, the look of it then, because um, because <laughs> I'm very intrigued actually. After I, I don't, I suppose I'm not that aware of of my own. But um, I mean, so what if if you're happy to talk us through, so that kind of time around November. For, for, first of all, I I had I had. I'm, I think I was living with cancer for probably over a year. Really, and this is this is why this is important because I think this is a very common theme amongst men that we don't. It's such an old thing, isn't it? Men don't go to the doctors, but it's so unbelievably true. I was, um, yeah, I, I had my lymph nodes on the back of my neck were out for a long time and over a year. And I was saying, I remember saying to Colleen, who's my wife, I said, um that oh, I, I don't feel right i don't i feel like there's something wrong with me but then i kind of just left it off didn't do anything and then my testicle I, I was on holiday in july of last year i think it was july and we went on the norfolk broads and um i had this ridiculous like shooting pain in my balls but i was on holiday with colleen my wife and my parents so I genuinely, naively, as a man, thought, oh, it's because I can't bang my wife. I must have blue balls. I genuinely thought that. I honestly thought that's why it was. That's because the most one, man one, thing ever, yeah. It is ridiculous. But one, because one day, and I didn't, I found out this after after the fact, but one day 
me and Colleen did a little walk into the woods where we were docked when we uh, when we the, when we docked the boat. Colleen and I walked off into the woods, and I was feeling kind of like I thought I wonder if it would sort of help if I sort of release whatever's in there. And uh, Colleen very helpfully <laughs> didn't Good do time. anything, but oh. she said to me, she said to me, just just cuddle me and have a wink. <laughs> <laughs> just and I did that. And it did help, right? It helped the pain. This is yeah. a serious point. Helped the pain. By the way, there was no, there was nobody around. This wasn't like, uh, indeed, this was like dogging. It was just <laughs> us. It was just yeah. us, and it was a medical problem. It was medical, it yeah. Anyway, it helped, and I recently found out that apparently, when you when you first have testicular cancer, one of a common symptom is this sharp pain in your balls, and if you do like masturbate or ejaculate it does actually help with the pain and it did like the pain went away so i didn't think about it until i got home off holiday and my left testicle had just swollen up to a size that was like ridiculous but it it i know say that it didn't straight away it started going slowly so it swelled it swelled up for a little bit quite small and i thought oh I said, and I even said to Colleen, I goes, do you think it looks different? But she didn't think it looked different. So I left it again for a while. And then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it eventually got to, I, I don't know, the size of like a, uh, a, a bit, I would say a bit bigger than your average Granny Smith. Do you know what I mean? Really? Yeah, it got very big, very big. And, wow. um, and it, and, and the problem is with this is that I, I know that people say about the NHS and that there is a massive problem with the NHS. I think the, the biggest problem with the NHS is probably the it's GPs more than anything. Because I went to my GP, which took so long, took such a long time to get an appointment. And I finally got the appointment and he said he thought it was a cyst, which again, and then so I was booked for an ultrasound, which took forever to get an ultrasound. Then I had the ultrasound and then they found the cancer almost immediately. They they don't they don't they're not allowed to tell you in the ultrasound, hmm. but um, I could sh the person that was doing it, they kind of allude to it in a weird way. And because I've had my friend Sanjay, who's been on this podcast as well, had the same thing. He he told me that if you've got it, you will know at the ultrasound because you'll just be able to tell. Yeah. And then, um, so then I had it and I, I knew from then I sort of said to Colleen, I think I've got cancer. And then uh, I got the diagnosis probably, what, well, uh, it was, I can't remember, maybe like a, a week later they phoned me up and said, oh, it's not good news. And I was like, okay. But, they, but he, he said it, it's, it's suspected cancer because they can't, they don't actually know it's cancer until they they you have the orchidectomy to have the testicle off and they see what type of cancer it is mm. they do the, the biopsy, biopsy yeah and they can't do that until you have the ball off so that's when you get like the proper confirmation but i but it was they knew i had cancer basically because my your cancer levels were rise mine were quite rised on i can't remember what it's called but you have your like your your tumor markers are rised, mm. so they were rised, and um, yeah, yeah. So it was very frightening. I was frightened for quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, how old are you? I'm thirty three. Which, by the way, is the most common age. It's the yeah that it it's you get it between, but I can't remember what the thing is. But it's like twenty. From 27 to 40 something is the most common age to get it. But the actual specific like age that most people get diagnosed with testicular cancer is 33, mm. which is very strange. I was bang on. Yeah, yeah. Young, young man's game. So I'm, hope, yeah. I'm hoping that 40 something's 41. So I've just had my 42nd birthday. I'll be like, yes, clear. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, so I, never, I didn't, well, first of all, I didn't realize the, well, the, the most common age was so young. And also that the kind of that average span of kind of mid twenties to forty. I I know you don't when you're I suppose that's the age when you kind of feel almost well, almost your most immortal, apart from being eighteen to twenty one and where you can kind of take on the whole world. But yeah. life's kind of settled and you're doing and you're getting on with being like an adult. 
who <laughs> who's doing whatever you're yeah, doing yeah. as an adult. But you're not old enough to kind of really worry about health issues unless you know that you're particularly, I don't know, yeah. an unhealthy lifestyle. So, I mean, is is there a common reason or or factor? Like, how much information were you given? Or like, do you wear still wear kind of white, tidy white pants? Or oh, like, yeah. like, I never, it, I never did, I never did. And I, I mean, I have been known to go commando as well. Mm. Like, I do that quite. I've never had. It's never been too. I did wear quite a lot of te- tight jeans when I was younger. Okay. Maybe that might be it. <laughs> but um, the, the only thing they they said to me that there 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 seems to be a link between undescended testicles when you're a baby. But I never had that. But there does mm. there seems to be a link there for some that's, reason. No idea why. That's when it doesn't drop from the, the stomach during growth. Yeah, and yeah, exactly, yeah. Business, a lot yeah. of dogs get that as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. but there's literally no other. They they got no other idea why. I mean, it's very common amongst uh, Scandinavian countries, which is strange. The only I did kind of think to myself, I go because it's is it goes up every year as well. Like there's a rise in testicular cancer mm. every year. Like, and the only thing oh, this is going to be, I don't want it to sound like a conspiracy, but I thought, well, what else goes up every year? The the climate the heat of the world so do you know what i mean yeah so I thought yeah maybe there's a sort of a correlation there between sort of the yeah you know, the heat the heat of the world going up and your balls maybe your balls can't handle they're, they're it not, they're not used to it yeah That's yeah, the, yeah. The, the, get, sit, get to the colder countries yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I suppose you do you start looking at these correlations don't you, you know when because you're, you're you're going through something i mean dramatic you're going you're going through uh something which could be a, a, a terrible outcome um and i suppose you justify things don't you You kind of try and look at connections yeah. and i mean i i'm so lucky to to not have kind of experience anything kind of like that i mean i did have but so the, i know the same one's been kind of close to cancer i mean i'm again still pretty lucky but I did have like my mum. Yeah. I was told my mum, my mum and dad are, are separated, and on like a Thursday, my uh, dad called and he was like, oh, "I just let you know I've got prostate cancer. Call early. Everything should be fine." I was like, "Oh shit, okay, right, okay, cool, all right, dad. Anything you need, let me know." And then on Friday, my mum calls me, so just saying, so you know, I got breast cancer. Caught very early, uh, and I was, oh. like, I was like, "What?" <laughs> but it's like, don't did you guys talk? Yeah, 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 have, yeah. You both, have you both kind of waited? Yeah, yeah. Each other is. Um, luckily, both very early and, and yeah, caught and cleaned out and, and fine. But like, I, 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 I don't know. It's just not. I don't know how I'd how I'd cope with it. Like, did you cope badly? Were you strong? Like, oh, do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what's kind of interesting about it is that I did I. I, I coped like remarkably well. It was, and you know what helped a lot is because I because I had a friend Sanjay had been for the exact same thing, so he could like guide me through yeah. what was going to happen to me. So I felt very calm back. It's only been recently where now it's kind of I'm through the worst of it that uh, I started to think like I had cancer. Like now it's over. I'm more like. Oh, that was that is. I feel more anxious now now about it yeah. than I did when I was actually going through it in a strange way. Because so I think you don't kind of have time to. Uh, you just kind of want to get it done. You just go into the doctors and stuff. You're not really having time to be too worried about it. Whereas I feel more like oh f- now now I've, now it's kind of through the worst of it. I feel a lot more that like, oh that was a lot. That was a strange thing to kind of go through. Just that word is terrifying, isn't it? But like when your yeah. mum and your dad ring you up to tell you that and just sort of saying that you have cancer is like a, it's a scary, I think they should rename it like lumpy bollock syndrome <laughs> or something like that. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Just to make it a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah. Like let's, if let's someone scary. tells you they've got lumpy bollock syndrome. Yeah. It's, yeah. I just, it's, it's a very, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was a lot, better going through it than i am now like now like everything that i have wrong with me i'm like oh bloody hell is that 
is that something else? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, has so it, you're has just it, more aware of aware of it. Mm. It's really made you, yeah, what just question every little ache and pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, cause I, I'm at, I'm at an age where I've be, I've become a massive hypochondriac. Like everything that's yeah that I I I know that goes wrong with me. I'm thinking right, this this is it. Like ah, uh, I had a a pain, a back back pain, and it's because I sleep awkwardly. I don't sleep enough, and I I kind of do too much. And I'm like, oh well, there you go. That's that's the kidneys gone. Like I had a uh, yes, I, had a... I know. I have the exact <laughs> same thing yeah. where I think that. I yeah. think that, but again, me, I'm in my car a lot. So I'm in my car a lot, which doesn't help your back. And I, I also don't sleep that well. And But that my, as soon as my back hurts, I think kidneys. Yeah. I think kidneys mm. straight away. It's weird, Instantly. right? Yeah. Oh, kidneys. Also, yeah. <laughs> kidneys. Kidneys are fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, you know, I've got terrible memory recall these days. And I, I put that down to not having to remember lots of stuff like because everything's written down or you get reminders and stuff but also my i'm telling myself great that's early on uh early on set alzheimer's uh because i'm just like why can i yeah. remember this also i think my wife messes with me and she's like we've had this conversation I'm like, Don't, have we <laughs> she's like who do you trust me or you that's cruel it is that's cruel yeah that's very cruel leave her leave her <laughs> she's a, so a heartless cruel. woman <laughs> I get exactly what you mean, right? Because when, like, whilst I had the cancer, it's like every single thing that was wrong with me, I thought was the cancer. Like, I kept, I, like, I kept waking up, right, in the middle of the night, sweating, mm. like, um, just profusely sweating. And I remember thinking, why is that happening? I've got, this must be the cancer. And then I stopped eating garlic butter chips <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night, every night. And I stopped sweating. It wasn't the cat. I was just being incredibly unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, why am I sweating? And it was literally garlic coming through my pores. <laughs> Not the uh, cancer. Garlic, you fat gar bastards. Garlic. Garlic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. Like, oh, you know, upset stomach. It's like, wow, why is it? It's come on. What's what's this all about? Okay. <laughs> And it's like, oh, this is happening quite regularly. And you check the stool. Well, that seems that seems fine. Oh, okay, Jeff. It's because you you're on holiday and you have drunk every day for the last four days. <laughs> yeah. Like your yeah. body's dehydrated. Drink some water. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. But I am that guy. Like I'm that like my yeah. I am that guy. Like I I will have like five cans of Red Bull and then wonder why I can't <laughs> sleep. I'm that person. But I am that person. Yeah, like, me too. And like, I'm like um. Like Colleen, my wife's actually thirteen years older than me, right? She's thirteen years older than me, which is a bit like a bit of an age gap. And whenever I tell people that, they always go, oh, "You're not afraid that she's going to die before you." And I always think you're massively underestimating how unhealthy I am. Like my blood is literally cheese drink. <laughs> like the other day, I had a Victoria sponge at seven a.m. in the morning. I'm pretty sure she's probably got a few years on me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's also, the, it's also the job like being a comedian you are so unhealthy like yeah. just and it's it's hard getting out of that that like getting out of that lifestyle like going home from a gig you just go to a mcdonald's it's so convenient like it's what we all do it's such a difficult cycle to get out of but i am since being ill it has made me like i do want to make those steps because like, i was also told that i had like high blood pressure I went to the when you before you have the operation they do a pre op. I don't know if you ever had have you ever had surgery, Jeff? Um I feel like I have. Yeah. <laughs> you have got a bad your wife's right. You have got <laughs> a bad memory. <laughs> uh no. No, nothing serious. Like No. Okay. Yeah, no, no, nothing that's short of just, you know, jabbing a bit of painkiller in you. Yeah. Well, because before you have surgery, yeah. they have a thing called a like they, you have a pre-op. Sorry, I just burped. <laughs> oh, I do apologise. That is so that's, so sorry. That's the cancer. Don't that's worry. The, that's the cancer. <laughs> yeah, the cancer. It's not the garlic. They it's can't mind it. It's not the garlic chips. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, 
<laughs> you have a pre-op and they um uh what was my point oh yeah so I was, and they do your blood pressure and that to make sure you can do a, with uh, be okay with the general anesthetic and uh, my blood pressure was like the blood pressure of a, of a 50 year old man <laughs> so, <laughs> so i had to um so i i i i trying to do this thing where i go for walks in the morning i haven't done i haven't done it that much but i am going to start doing it because i can start feeling i'm starting to be unhealthy again just from eating a lot mm. and eating a lot of junk like um as alcohol's not necessarily i do like a drink but i like i mean i'm having a drink tonight but i, I don't i'm not a, i used to drink a lot but i don't drink as much as i used to like um it's quite rare that i get a few tinnies now but um uh what was my point but yeah i do that uh, i think a lot of it was energy drinks actually i was drinking a lot of energy drinks in the day and i think that was making my blood pressure go up yeah also i'm an anxious man very like anxious I do, and um i think w when there's a thing called white coat syndrome have you ever heard of that no where you when you go to the hospital a lot of people in my family have it actually it's when you go to the hospital you just get so anxious that your blood pressure spikes yeah. and that happens to my mum yeah. auntie everybody and i think that might have been a big part i was going to say you've got cancer you're in pre op mm. you're i mean that's kind of sh stressful anyway and yeah. actually you're not the yeah. first i had a, a very similar conversation recently um with a guy and he was saying uh, it was actually a, 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 what a kind of a conversation with his friend, but that yeah, they're there. I, I don't think it was testicular cancer, but it was geni you know genital related. And I said, "Oh, your blood pressure is very high." I said, "Well, that's because you yeah, know, my trousers are down, and there's <laughs> there's like three people looking at yes. me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not feeling at my best right now. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Well, because you get a thing called hospital. Have you ever heard of? Uh, hospital penis have you ever heard of this <laughs> is, is, this, is this when it shrinks it. is this when it shrinks it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, it's um, a real thing definitely it's literally <laughs> yeah it's real it's real <laughs> but um <'cause... laughs> yeah yeah but no, like it's real, generally because you get it looked at so many times and it does my would completely like you was it would retract completely back into itself <laughs> every single time but it is quite yeah, it's embarrassing. Uh, see, that's you want good. to say to the doc. You want to say to the doctor, it's not, it's not normally like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not good for me because I'm a grower, not a shower. So if it's going inwards, then exactly. they're going to be like, so how have you got testicles? You are a woman, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh mate, energy drinks. Uh, sorry, slight tangent. Energy drinks are the way. I so, yeah, I enjoy a vodka Red Bull, right? And uh, oh, I you. <laughs> oh i love a vodka red bull and what i do is i have like six vodka red bulls but then i'll go onto the caffeine free diet coke with my vodka to kind of even it out a bit because yeah, everyone yeah. knows that's exactly how it works but um at one point i was yeah. i was working and i had to get really early catch a train to go to work and so i was i was drinking about just during the day about two liters of like a cheap red bull substitute uh and then i'd go home and i wouldn't i wouldn't sleep and it's like, oh my god! So I'm really yeah. tired. I'm really tired the next day. So I have two liters of of straw. And by the end of the week, I was hallucinating. I was calling my wife and telling her things from like years before we got together that I was kind of guilty of. I was like, I yeah. have to tell you this. And she's like, Jeff, what is up? With yeah, you? yeah. And yeah. and actually finishing them, like stopping drinking them for a while, was really difficult as well because it was just yeah. my body crashed. But I was I was kind of. It's like, it's like, oh, okay, maybe they're not good for you. So that's why I now have the caffeine-free diet yeah. cake to even out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I think ca caffeine is all. I used to have this joke about vodka Red Bull that it was essentially ADHD and narcolepsy in one beverage. <laughs> 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 it is. Like yeah. You could literally, you could fall asleep in a conga line. That's what vodka Red Bull is. <laughs> It's true that if my, me and my wife have had a few drinks and we're both on it, if she says, oh, do you know what? I don't think I fancy a, another one. I'm like, yeah, no worries. Within seconds, I'd have fallen asleep on the sofa. Seconds. Yeah, yeah. And, she's, yeah. and, and like in the morning, she's like, Jeff, you, you had like six four cribbles. How did you fall asleep that quick? I'm like, I'm just yeah. tired, yeah, tired yeah. isn't it? But otherwise, she, yeah. she was like, 
Oh, no, that's fine. Let's watch a film or something. I'll be up all night. It's it's mad stuff. But anyway, it's not yeah. good for you. A dangerous. Yeah, it's a very dangerous drink. And Anything it, with any alcohol with energy drink is so dangerous. It's so dangerous. It literally says it really on, the, on the can, don't mix with alcohol, <laughs> which is yes, exactly. Which is insane. Yeah. Um, and also, well, they it, sell it, don't they? They literally sell it. Yeah, it's it's mad. And if you if you baby testicles in it, then it could give you um, high blood pressure and testicular cancer. That's <laughs> that's what I've learned from yes, this. Exactly. Just stop yeah. ba- bathing my testicles yeah. in it. <laughs> so, so what? How? What was the pr- the procedure like? So like obviously, you're you're under you're knocked out. Assuming that, like how long? What was that yeah. day like? Do you know what? It was a bloody lovely day out. That's all I can say. It was actually really nice, genuinely. I, I said this to, like I said this again, I keep mentioning Sanjay, but I said it to Sanjay afterwards. I was like, I actually had a really nice time because I, I went out and I spent, I was, before you have the operation, you're in like a waiting room with all like all the other people waiting for surgery. And because they, it's all men and it's, there was, every man was in there for basically prostate issues. And I was mm. the only one having the testicle off. But it was, there was a, Everyone was talking and sharing like their story of what was happening to them, and there was this real like camaraderie amongst like men talking about real stuff. And I really liked, I really liked yeah. that. I thought that's really nice that we all felt comfortable because because I think because we were all nervous, we had, we just kind of started sharing and like speaking to each other. And I thought that's uh, that was a really nice moment throughout the entire thing, just to kind of you know when you like you share really important things with other men. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I feel like it's important that men do speak to each other. And it felt a bit like that. In fact, like, oh, this is good that we're a bunch of men actually talking about that. We're scared and that and real things. It was a nice moment. And cause I was like one of the youngest in there because they were all in for their prostate. So a lot of the time the people in their like fifties and sixties and stuff like that, which is another thing that, that i I think is ridiculously common in men. And again, I mean, I know people that have died from prostate cancer just because they simply didn't go to get checked. They had problems and just, just left it. And it's so crazy that, well, I don't know why men do that. I really don't. Why do you think men do that? Because I did it. I did the exact same thing. I was lucky. It took for me, for my wife to actually make the appointment. Because I yeah. was just, I completely put it off. And I, th- I think you've kind of summed a lot of that up in, in what you've just said, because all those gents sat there talking real a year ago when nothing was wrong. Yeah. Probably none of them, yeah, you're not going to have that level of in- engagement necessarily. I mean, I'm I'm a massive advocate of, of talking, like mental health, <laughs> because phys- physical and mental health, these, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's hand in hand, um, even when they are separate and yeah. i th- i think people should to talk there's a I, th- I think the stigma now around men not talking i think it's 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 almost a false belief because there's so many people i mean i saw today a uh, a advert for uh, for men to have and have vinnie jones yeah kind yes. of 80s yeah, yeah. 90s football and hard man yeah telling people you know do it and and because it is it's so important and it's health wise whether it's your, your your brain or your nuts you know but i, I think men are embarrassing yeah, yeah. I, I say to my wife like yeah I, I got five kids and i've been saying for about eight years that i'm gonna get the snip and yeah i, I was close like when, when you go to the walk-in i was i was kind of quite close but then oh, i know something happened i didn't it was very easy for me to to, to blow it off and, and then I was like, right, okay, I'll do it again. And then went to the doctors to get more referral again. I said, oh, no, we do it in-house now. I was like, what? So the person I come to speak with about my mental health would have also have kind of seen my penis. And then I, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just how, don't don't worry, we see loads of them. And then for me, that was, it's like, oh, you know, just another reason not to. And I say to my wife about it, and she's like, I every six months I go and have yeah half the world looking at yeah. my vagina for yeah. smear tests yes. and, yes, and I, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, oh, yeah, I've, I've had 
I got I got five. I got two older ones. Um, uh, she she's I've got three of my wife, and she's like the, our first child. She's a twenty four hours worth of pain. They're coming in saying, "Oh, you know, do you mind if some do- uh, trainees come in and just see the process?" And she's like, yeah. "I I don't care." And you've got like eight nippers in there, kind of looking yeah. like Doogie Howser, just looking at, <laughs> at looking at, at, at a vagina. And she's just like, "Just get the baby out of me." And I'm there going, "Yeah, but." Yeah. I don't know if I want two people looking at, you know, fondling around with my bits. Like if I was really <laughs> ill, then fair enough. This is like, this is just so I could bang more without a Johnny, you know, it's just like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's almost like, Oh, I don't really want to spend money on, you know, a nice haircut. I could just get my normal cut. Like I don't, I don't need it all. I don't need all that, yeah, yeah. that flash in the past. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and um, I still haven't had it done. And I, th- I think it's, self-conscious or embarrassment or that oh you know wanting well you did you said didn't you say that like so they didn't they say didn't one of them say don't worry we've seen loads of them yeah that that fills me with that makes me feel worse because they get they got more penises to compare yours with then so (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) yeah you know (laughs) you know that chart that you said i don't know if you're using a real chart but it's like that um Oh, you know, how tell me what the pain is. And it's kind of got a smiley face and it goes down to a really angry face. And it's kind of got this chart. Point point to how you're feeling and you're yeah. like you've got this scrunched up face. They're like, oh, okay. So point to roughly where your penis is before we get going. Like, would you say you're hit? No, no, lower. <laughs> like keep going, keep going down. You're not you're yeah. not gonna look at it and wow. Like that's that's what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, and <laughs> I think that's it. If we can't go something as, as simple as, as that, I mean, if my testicle is the size of an yeah. apple, I would probably go and be like, yeah. okay, can I? <laughs> but I would ask to be put under anesthetic. I'd be like, right, I'll, I'll just knock me out. And then you just pull my trousers down and have a look. Like, <laughs> like well, that'd be, yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Pro- there's mm, probably a, I don't know, a legal reason why they're not allowed to do that these days, <laughs> snowflakes. But yeah. I do think it's, <laughs> it's a, I know it's a pride thing like we're we're men we're indestructible and it all comes back to historic I think it is I think it I think it is I think it is the shackles in it I think it's the shackles and masculinity a little bit I think it has to be that's the only I also think that I don't I think not I, I think that everybody doesn't take men's health that seriously I think everyone always thinks oh they'd be all right because they're the man I do mm. think that is the case. I think people do have that attitude. I even kind of found that with just telling people that I had testicular cancer. But my initial, my initial way to deal with it was to be, uh, was to, to, I mean, I told everyone social media by making a joke of it. Yeah. So that was my initial thing to do, which kind of frees everyone up to do to make jokes about it as well. But then I did kind of think, oh, that's that's an interesting thing, and that's maybe why. But that was my that was my fallback thing to do, and I think that's pretty much every a lot of men's fallback to do. And I I wondered why that that's that's part of it. That's part of the. But I don't take it very seriously. Men's health in general, like even prostate cancer, there's always jokes about up the bum and things like that. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like jokes about prostate cancer, and I don't think when say. I don't say if a woman had a, a a breast removed, I don't think people would be so easy to make jokes about that. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, and I I, I think well, yeah, as a defence mechanism, we we men kind of do make light of things more. Yeah. Some women don't, but I I think men's natural reaction is to play it down and yeah. don't worry, everyone, I'm fine. You know, yeah. Putting, every, putting people's minds, oh, it's okay, I'm fine. It's all a big, big joke. But, you know, you really should make sure you keep your eye on it and go to the doctors. Yeah. But, you know, it's all it's all fine. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly that. Because he, but that's what I mean. It wasn't just, it wasn't just me. It was other people's response to it. Like, the amount of ball puns I heard mm. was just ridiculously, like, everyone was doing a ball pun. And it, I was fine with it. Made me laugh and that. But it was just, I found it interesting. I thought, well... I think everyone doesn't take men's health seriously at all. Everyone just seems to joke about it. Yeah, I and and you're right. And even you know this as this kind of 
Vinnie Jones thing I mentioned, you know, big hard man, Vinnie Jones, so yeah. annoying, you got to talk, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember him when he was, you know, grabbing Gaza by the nuts and all this, like, like oh, now he's yes. telling us this. Yeah, yeah. It's almost a bit slapstick in itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe that's because men are quite simplistic in nature and actually that's probably the easiest way to get... No, like, yeah. Don't get me wrong, it yeah. doesn't make... It's not good for the wider uh, community. No. Um, and, I, and I think, oh, I don't know, making jokes about, like, post-stop, yeah, I will give all I'll give all the ball pounds. During it, I'd be, you know, concerned and, yeah. uh, you, you, you know, make sure you're... You know, okay. it, like, it never, it, honestly, it never, like, like, it never upset me. I think I, I, it, was, it made me feel more comfortable in a way that people were willing to make sort of light of it, like my friends and stuff like that. But it was, it just, I kind of found it interesting that I don't think it, that would happen, say, if it was someone's, if it was someone had a breast removed. I just don't think it would be the same. I And I, I think that might be why men i think men don't take their health as seriously as perhaps maybe women do yeah that makes yeah. sense i don't it's... want to sound misogynistic in any way i just want do you know what i mean when i say that i, I do and i think you know women's health has probably been highlighted or well, physical health has been highlighted more over the years but e even then you know cervical cancer was yeah is isn't yeah. checked enough and i think that's a, a, a same same thing it's that the experience of having to go through in the what they call faucet or the, the horrible i've had it explained to me it's horrible but yeah yeah so a lot of it could be human condition i think yeah men probably less so because of yeah pride and masculinity and embarrassment and um i think oh here's his question though do, do, if it was uh, your nose or your yeah. ear, and that one, yeah, you know, one of your ears was removed. Do you or do you think you'd have the yeah. same jokes? Do you think people would be a bit, or do you think because <laughs> it's can't you can't see it? It's almost yeah. Well, I think it's something to do with the genitalia, isn't it? As well, men's genitalia is a well-known joke. It's funny. And my yeah. my They're my ugly. genitalia is hilarious. <laughs> Even... <laughs> Very funny genitalia. <laughs> Even more so now. Like now it. It looks so ridiculous. Like it's because it's ridiculous. I imagine an erection is more like an exclamation point now. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. It really just you know because penis is always lean, but mine yeah. leans so much more now. <laughs> it's got nothing to like balance on, so it's proper over. It looks drunk. It looks like it's drunk. Like it's just oh. It's drunk. It's drunk at the airport, and one of his the, the, his his suitcase. He's left a suitcase. <laughs> he's just drunk, and he's like, "Oh, right over there." Yeah, yeah. Don't, oh. don't do but yeah, but I do think it's that. It's but that's a good question, though. I I think you might have hit the nail on the head there. Like, if it was my ear, would it be the same? I think it would be for me. I probably would still make jokes about it, but I don't think other people would be as ready to. Because it's something that you can see and it's a physical yeah. thing. So say if I had an ear removed, you would be able to see that now, wouldn't you? I can imagine it would be you wouldn't be wanting to say something about my ear, but you've said stuff about my penis tonight, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. And my genitalia. Oh, and it's it's almost like it's it's yeah, great. I mean, I th I think if if you have your penis off, I think yeah. there's not a man <laughs> alive who would dare to joke about that i think no. it's, it, no, it's that's, as that's... soon as the reality that you yeah oh i could lose my penis okay i'm not putting that bad energy into the world yeah yeah, yeah. Like your testicle, you're like well that's okay yeah, well, yeah. you got another one but also maybe it's because of lack of understanding of actually what that could have meant as, as in life expectancy wise yeah is that because that's the real bit isn't it? oh you've lost your ball you're fine hey that's cool. You yeah. got another one. You got one. Yeah, you know, you you you've hang weird now. That's fine. Nathan's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, but, but it's it's because it's not thought of in that yeah that extra step of what could have been. Yeah. Um. Whereas I suppose if you lose an ear, your ears. Yeah, God. I mean, if, I I thought also if you lose your nose, people would certainly not make jokes about that. If you yeah, you still no. want it. If you got if you lose an ear, you're Van Gogh, right? If you lose your nose, I know you're Voldemort, and that's less. <laughs> um that's, that's good but 
I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say because it <laughs> should be. I liked that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I said to myself, I wear, I wear glasses, and my my son and I was I was dis- disgusted with it. There was some kid, and he he crossed the road weird, and he made he made a comment about because he was wearing glasses. I was like, did I I wear glasses? Yeah. I was like, you know, it's like it's a disability, right? Just because it's treated, we have to pay for it. It's still I still have yeah, yeah, yeah. problem seeing. Like, yeah, just throw stuff around. So I, I hate it when, yeah, yeah especially that, it comes from kids. In, but that is interesting. That is something. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've hit upon something there. Is that like, yeah, why is it like some some things like disabilities and that? Like you just say, like everyone makes fun of people wearing glasses. Mm. That's a very sort of and almost accepted, isn't it? Almost yeah. an accepted thing to say. Oh, you know, goggle eyes or something like that. Almost accepted. It's not frowned upon that much i would say and but that is interesting because like you say yeah that is that is a physical disability yeah even yeah, though it's not maybe it's, it's because it's a disability that's easily fixed sort yeah of kind of yeah do you know what i mean just pop some glasses on yeah, yeah definitely i mean but in, in theory your test you have your test score removed okay it's an operation there's recovery yeah because also i'm assuming and this is a bit i'd like to get onto now so you say to people yeah I had testicular cancer, it's gone, and people are like, "Oh, okay, that's the end of the story." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. actually, so oh, it's not. It's you, not been right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've had it removed, and it took a, it took me a long time. Like, like I didn't realize how sort of painful the operation was going to be. Actually, I was a bit naive to it mm. and thinking, oh, "I'll be fine." But because because when you're under general anaesthetic and you go home the first day, I thought, "Oh, this is quite, you don't feel it because you're still drugged up." Like you know what I mean? You're still drugged up, so you don't feel the pain yet. But the de- the day after waking up, well, I was in agony. Like, I couldn't walk very far and stuff like that. I just I had to get oh, one of the most <laughs> embarrassing, but almost almost lovely as well is that my wife showered me. She oh, showered no. me. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> I felt so vulnerable. It was ridiculous because she like showered me. She got in my no. bum and everything. But even she got in your. <laughs> but even then, I was. I kind of was like, oh, like I was made light yeah. of that. But actually, you've just had life saving treatment <laughs> operation. Yeah. Died, and you, man. And you need help. You're not going to be there with yeah. a loofah and getting all in the bits, are you? You, you, yeah. Yeah, you need. You need help, and you know. Thankfully, you've got you know someone there who can, can yeah. help help you with that. Yeah, and the other thing is like, yeah, I do. F- I think you're right in saying that a lot of people did kind of, like even some of my family were just kind of like assumed that oh he, he's okay now mm. sort of thing and I thought well no like that's that's it did, um I am okay but it's like it is that was a lot I still haven't fully gotten over like just to how that affects my me mentally because it was like a it like I said at the beginning, it's like it was, I kind of dealt with it so well whilst I was going through it that now is the time where I'm like, oh shit, I had cancer. And it's kind of sinking in more now. And the the worry was as well is that that, that cancer can come back. And yeah. if you've had cancer, you're more prone to get cancer again. Like, so, yeah, so it's always on my, it's on, it's on my mind a lot. I think it's probably the same for anyone who has any type of cancer. That you're probably always thinking a lot of the time, "Oh, f- now is is it is it going to come back? It like is that like pain in my ankle? Is that cancer? Is do you know what I mean? Is this cancer? Is that cancer? I think I do. I'm always thinking about it a lot yeah. now, a lot more. And of course, before that happened, I was never thinking about it. So it's definitely changed me, like in some way. And even the surgery, like the surgery that you have, I was talking to Sanja about this recently, is that he he went to the doctors recently because he's got like numbness and pain where the uh, where they do. Do you know what what how they do the surgery? No. So what 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 would you think they do? Do you think they they take? How would you think? What do you think they take off? What do you think? Where do you think? How do you think they do it? Instant reaction. I I think I have a better idea. I so instant thing would have been slice open your scrotum and just pop bits out. But do they go through like your stomach or through yeah, they underneath do. Yeah. or something? No, no. What they do is they 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 go in your mouth 
Ano na naman ito? Really? Did I get you? Did you get I was like, what the f***? No, what they're doing? I assume they didn't pull it out the mouth, but I think they're putting... Yeah, okay. Do you know where you, you know your, do you know where your pubic bit is? Like on your, you, you know your pubes on your pubic bit. Of it, yeah, you yeah. Have to be more specific. <laughs> so they go in, they go in literally, yeah, on your on your pubic bit. They go in through that way. I suppose it's your groin area. Mm. They go in through your groin, and then they literally go into the sack through that way, and then pull it out. So it's a deep cut. It's not like just out of the sack. It's like because they got to tie up all the tubes and like that. Yeah. So they have to sort of uh, tie everything up in a nice little bow, and uh, and then like do, and then zip you back up essentially. But what happens because of that is that you get you get a tingling sensation for some. It can be forever. Like so, there is a numbness that I have there. Sanjay has it there. Who's also had the operation? Is, is it all... kind of unceremonial kind of ghost ball syndrome or ghost yeah. ghost I, testicle syndrome or yeah. something? Yes. Um, which, by the way is a great term ghost <laughs> testicle <laughs> that's a there's, kid's book that you should write i was gonna say there's a film in that somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ghost testicle the ghost the the, the the glorious adventures of the ghost testicle <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> where is he today <laughs> yeah. <Let's> carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you get a numbness and like uh, and, and a pain and you get phantom pains from that ghost testicle essentially so you do get aches and pains and it feels it like it feels odd down there it doesn't feel it feels quite strange when you like i think it probably takes a long time to get used to it actually because it is a weird fit it's a weird feeling you've lost a, a limb not a limb but a part of your yeah. body haven't you so i suppose when someone loses an arm they get like phantom pains and stuff like that it's pretty much similar to that i can imagine yeah yeah but even my remaining testicle aches as well like i get aches in there quite a lot because uh <laughs> sorry because i'm when so you, sorry the, the I, remaining just, I just as when you said that my brain just went oh maybe he's missing the other one like <laughs> sorry, it's, i'm so sorry please carry on <laughs> it's like but, heart, yeah. it's heartbroken but yeah yeah he's getting lonely yeah <laughs> but um uh, yeah, so your remaining testicle, you get aches and pains and stuff like that because it's doing the job of two essentially. So it's taking on, it's taking on. Yeah, it's, it's like someone's left and he's got at work and he's got to do, he's got to do that person's Several job. Time. Yeah, it's like yeah. So um, yeah, so so that one's generating test the amount of testosterone that two testicles would normally generate. So that can take its toll i mean my right testicle was knackered do you know what i mean it's just tired doing all of this work but another thing that happened which i haven't actually talked about yet i was going to talk about this on stage a bit tomorrow is that uh, i've also got low testosterone which is a thing that's happened since i've had the operation mm. i've found out that i had i've had low testosterone which makes sense because the like, low testosterone and like low libido recently so i've not been that's a result fit. of the surgery yeah and, yeah. They, and i spoke to them and they said that it can it should return to normal but at the moment like my yeah my libido is in it's in the, which is uh yeah yeah and like but in a way it's quite nice not thinking about sex all of the time mm. do you know what i mean like, there's no no hugs in the woods yeah, did, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I've I've been a lot more productive as well. <laughs> it is good. I've got so much done. I'm so focused. Like my doctor said to me, "Do you want to go on testosterone replacement therapy?" I was like, "No, thanks. I've got to finish this novel." I've got really. <laughs> but it is nice because you don't realize how uh, debilitating like sexy thoughts are. Like thinking about <laughs> sex all of the time. It's a nightmare. Now I could walk through a market see two juicy melons perfectly placed together mm. and just think they'd be nice in a fruit salad. Nothing <laughs> sexy. It's good. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it, it's the case. And she'll kill me for saying this. My wife is currently upstairs. She's, she's really like this. I don't know. I think it's chest infection, cold. Like she's just coughing yeah, up all this yeah. stuff. It's, it's horrible. Uh, yeah. It has been for days. Barely left bed. 
and she's just like, oh, I, I'm so sorry. She's like, oh, I, I look like crap. I was like, ah, I still would, though. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, but thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Rest. <laughs> Men could be throw, throwing up, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm not missing the opportunity." Um, yes, yes. That's, yes. I, I love that. You're, that kind of just so much more. For, oh, do you think you will get? Yeah, at, at some point you'll go for treatment on it, or no, no. What I'm, I'm actually like it's. Um, I'm expecting it to probably come back. Like I've started to actually feel a bit more. Uh, it's, it's starting to awaken down there again. <laughs> it's starting, awakens. To, starting to rise up. Yeah. So I, I think it probably sort itself out. Yeah. But, 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 um, but, that's, but that's another thing. It's still another big thing. Think yeah, about yeah, yeah. and like, is this, is it, you, you're still young, you're married. Like, yeah. Like what, it, there's, there's a whole lot of life. And what does that look yeah, like? Yeah. yeah it's, it's still an, another aspect of the cancer. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. You had a, um, a course of chemo as well. Oh yeah, 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 yes. I had. Uh, I must stress as well when I when I say all this stuff. Look, I am very much aware of how lucky I was and how lucky I am because, like, prime example, like whenever you go, I must. Or I always want to say like the people. Like I said earlier on about the NHS, the, the only problem I had with the NHS was the GP appointments and getting the GP appointments. Once I was actually in the system and in the hospitals in Southampton and in QA, like the nurses and that and the doctors were fantastic, like yeah. absolutely amazing. And I felt incredibly lucky when I would go to, I can't remember what it's bloody called now, the place in Southampton I would go to, which is like a, the cancer place where you go to have the chemo, is... um the amount of like young people I saw there who were much younger than me, who were like in their twenties who had cancer. Also an, an interesting thing about cancer, about testicular cancer is that if you get testicular cancer in your thirties, you're more common. It's more common to get the cancer that rem that nine out of 10 times remains in the testicle. It's called sem semolona. Semolona. I always want to call it semolina, like the uh, <laughs> the school dinner pudding. But um, semolon semolona. I think it's called something like that. But it, it rem nine out of ten times it remains in the testicle. And but if you get testicular cancer when you're younger, like say in your twenties, it's a much more aggressive testicular cancer. Oh, right. It's a different type of cancer, and it will nine and it will you've got to catch it because it will go to other parts of your body. But they are. Extr out of all the cancers like they're extremely good at sort of curing testicular cancer it's like 19 it's in the 90s like success Survival, rate. yeah very 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 good at dealing with it they know what they're doing with it which is a good thing um but whilst but of course when you go to the, the cancer places you're not just with people with testicular cancer you're with all sorts of cancers they're all all in together and when i was having my chemotherapy I had it for an hour and I, I I didn't I didn't like I didn't like it. I really didn't enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't easy. I didn't I didn't I felt I don't like the the, the biggest part for me about this whole thing was having like chemicals put in me. Like even mm. before the chemo, I had a thing called a, you know what a CT scan is. Yeah. And during a CT scan, they they put blue dye in you. And it, I can't remember what it's called, intra I can't remember what it's called, but it's, they put blue dye on you so it can show up if it's gone to any other organs. And I hated that. I had a bad like reaction to that. I started panicking because I don't like chemicals in me. So I was having the chemotherapy, but I was sat next to to a, a bunch of people. You all having chemotherapy together, and some of them were having it for like like six hours every day. Wow! And I was only and I was only having like an hour. And it, I just it made me feel incredibly lucky, but also in a in a weird kind of way. I don't know. I I, I also thought like I, if I was seriously ill, I don't know if I would do that. Like say if oh, I really? had if I had cancer absolutely everywhere. There, there was a big part of me that thought I don't know if I'd want to put myself through having a lot of chemotherapy. Just because it was, it it did, it, it really, it really f you up. 
Like it, like the people that I was in the room with just looked complete, very poorly, and mainly they were very poorly from the chemotherapy they was having, not yeah. necessarily whatever illness they had. So it, it did make me think twice. Like if I ever, if I ever get anything again, I don't. And it, and it, if it's more aggressive and everywhere in my body to the point where they recommend a <laughs> load of chemo, I don't know if I would say yes to it. I might just say, just give me <laughs> loads of painkillers and yeah. I'd, you know i'd go go because i think i think the chemo and from what i've heard like the chemo is the the, the thing that makes you feel the worst but much worse the, than the cancer the cancer you can have painkillers to deal with that but if you're really ill yeah you, if you've got to have a lot it just doesn't look nice and i didn't i personally only had an hour of it and i felt like <laughs> for uh like a week or something like that it didn't feel good and it made me feel really awful and it just made me think oh i don't know if i'd ever want more of that wow does that make sense it, yeah it does i mean yeah yeah I, I i'd never kind of thought of it like that where you'd i don't know like like looking at that and having to make not having to make that decision but actually contemplating it because and again this goes yeah, back yeah. on to the fact that your journey's not over the fact that you've had it once there is a, a, a potentially a heightened chance for you to to get some form again and you've almost crossed that bridge already even even though yeah there's this yeah hope on everything that the rest of your life you, you know, carry on ripe old age telling your jokes and yeah, finding new material because everyone's forgotten about your testicle, and <laughs> yeah. But but in the back of your mind is always that it, should it happen, should something aggressive happen, they say right, you need to have yeah you know, six hours of chemo a day. Then you've already yeah. kind of had that. Well, I've seen what it looks like. Yeah, I just don't know if I'd put myself through it personally. I I honestly I don't know. I mean, I, I can't honestly say that until I was ever, God forbid, in that situation yeah. where told me that i needed to have that much it's just i, I wouldn't i mean this time around i was quite quick to be like yeah give me the chemo give me the chemo give it me for an hour i'll be it'll be fine but i don't i think now that i've kind of seen what i've like i've had the therapy i know a little bit of what it feels like i don't like it. i don't die. but i yeah i would definitely would have to think it would be more of a I would have to think quite a lot about it. It wouldn't be an easy, yep, just give me the chemo again. I would be like, oh, okay, I need to think about this now. Mm. Do I actually want to do that? Yeah. But well, God forbid, that, well, hopefully that never happened. Well, so any, that's, yeah. that's it. And that's, yeah, that's how that bridge never needs to be crossed. Um, yeah. And I mean, I, I think, I, do, I think that might be a, a good job because we've spoken kind of almost about the full or the full journey to date. Yeah. Um, we've covered a hell of a lot of ground, like about how people have, are interacting with you and how you've dealt with it yourself and obviously the treatment and everything. Um, and that, how lucky you are, but yeah, we're, it's here to kind of, or we're here to discuss it, but also to, to make it better. It's certainly that awareness side. And I think, yeah, obviously the way to make cancers better, better or testicular cancer better, all cancers yeah. is just to, hey, you know, click, click the fingers. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, unfortunately, you know, the, yeah. the power is not with, kind of within us just yet. So it is really that awareness piece. Um, oh, because, you know, I, I, I am, I suppose, ashamed to admit that I, until talking to you right now, I would not have had any idea what I was looking for. I don't check regularly. I don't, never, right, never, yeah. never have done. Uh, every so often I do. And I think, well, what, yeah, I'm in my forties. Is that what they've always felt like? Like, I, I don't know. Now knowing, yeah, the swelling. Well, I didn't, I, that's what I mean. Like, it, it can be so different. Like, I didn't have a lump. I never had a lump. I didn't have a lump, and that's normally what they say to look for. Like, Sanjay had a pea-sized lump when he had oh, his. Oh, really? So he found a lump. Mine, mine I was, there was never a lump. It just gradually got 
Yes. What I would say is I noticed something was different before it swelled up. So mm. I noticed that it just felt like the shape of it just felt a little bit different. So I would, that's what I would say. If, if you would know, I think, if you feel your balls and it just feels a little bit off, you just think, well, that don't feel right. I would say go and get checked. If it just feels a little bit misshapen or the shape feels strange, I would say go get checked. Because I think you can just naturally tell that because you feel them every day. I know you do. You're a dirty pervert. You've always got your hands down. <laughs> yeah, hand. but that's the thing. I'd, <laughs> I'd always got my hands down. Uh, I don't. Uh, not every all the time. Um, yeah, but are they – I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, are they – because they, they're not round, so they're kind of eggy. Is that no. right? Are they meant to be round? I don't know. No, not... <laughs> I, this yeah. year, I've, I honestly, I don't. No, they're not round. They're not round. I, I'm more what? of a tip grabber, you see, than a ball grabber. Yes. Yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> or isn't that in that their old in there that isn't there that old joke where it's like, how do you find a lump in a ball of lumps? And that's <laughs> kind of isn't that someone did that joke? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is kind of like a bag. It is like a bag of lumps. It's it? just a, right. a bag of lumps. Uh, it's yeah. like, okay, so you're looking for, okay, so it's a noticeable kind of piece of shape or shooting pains or so bad. You're saying about yes. the lymph nodes as well. So I never, never thought that could be. Yes, I would. If you I, get things like mumps and stuff like that, it's all connected, isn't it? Yes, well, the lymph, yeah, the, the, yeah, the lymph node thing is... Uh, that's basically your immune you know it's your immune system telling you that something's wrong and because and i had that for over a year so like my lymph nodes were out and as soon as i had the surgery they went away yeah so it's very like oh, okay that's what that must have been my okay. body was literally telling me and you'll feel them <laughs> you'll feel like a, if you feel like a little lump but sometimes they do come out and in a little bit anyway yeah because some people have them, Mark, because mine still come out a little bit, but I did have very prominent like lumps on the back of my neck. My I'm, lymph nodes are very swollen. I keep, I'm going to have to find out where my lymph nodes are now because I'm feeling around and I just, is that a lump? Is that a lump? Is that yeah, a lump? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a very lumpy guy anyway, so it could be, <laughs> <laughs> could be difficult. Um, yeah. Okay, I mean, in, in the spirit of, of making it, better know that if you could have done anything differently what would it be and when would you have done it um i would have done it as soon as i got the this as soon as i got the shooting pains i should have done it i the thing is i knew something was wrong i just put it off and i put it off and i put it off and i'm very lucky that one my wife sorted it out for me I'm very lucky that and she was there to be like, no, you need to get that checked now. But in reality, I was putting it off for such a long time, even though I knew there was something wrong. So if anything happens this time around, I'm sh straight to the doctors. Do you know what I mean? Ever yeah. again. So that's what I would have done differently. I would have just done it straight away. Because it could have been a very different story. And I think about that a lot. It's like, yeah, that I left it for such a long time that, it really could have gone somewhere else. Yeah. So I feel very lucky that that I got the type that is remains in the testicle. But yeah, so I would tell that to anyone. Just get if you noticed any problem, not just your balls, but anything, go and get checked. It's not it's because it could literally time can save your life. If you get it early, you can completely save your life. Like a few months early can save your life. See, uh, that's that's yeah, a, a very strong statement, and I think yeah, we all worry about taking up doctors' times when we all know there's lots of waiting times, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we we put it off, think well, it'll get better. Oh well, it's not actually causing me any problems. Oh well, there's there's always a re oh, I'm a bit busy. Oh well, yeah, my yeah, big yeah. thing is God. If there is something serious, then I, I've actually got I need to do this. I still got the tip run to do on Saturday, so <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll give them a call on Monday once I've done it, and I didn't get yeah, to do yeah, the tip yeah. run. So yeah, but we we put stuff off, and and actually, you get the reality is we get one life, we got one body, we got to kind of look you know, after I, it. Yeah, until they can clone us, or you know, 
put our brains into cyborgs, we've kind of got to look after our lot. And uh, yeah, yeah, maybe garlic chips at eleven o'clock is just uh, <laughs> is is one of the sacrifices to make on that. Maybe less victorious yeah. sponges. I need to, <laughs> um, you know, kick kick a couple of Red Bulls down, maybe, and you know, yeah. walk a bit more. And I, I think we all know there's little things we can. Yeah, I mean, look, look at Hetty. So Hetty on her. Um, her episode obviously she was, was talking about her weight loss journey and how she lost 10 stone in 18 months and so it's insp- it, so un- unbelievably inspirational yeah but when i look at what she what she done and how she got so much healthier it's, in- yeah. it's insane and she does her dancing now mm. and she did it because you know well she said the catalyst was she couldn't wear red lipstick because of some uh some irritation and it was all stemming from that yeah. And the reality is, yeah, in another six months, year or whatever, she could have had something seriously wrong. And yeah, luckily yeah. she started yeah, this journey. Maybe we could all just, yeah, I'm all for body positivity. I'm all for that. But we can still be healthy and enjoy things. Yes. And if there are things that, you know, yeah. I, that, there's, uh, the unfortunate thing is we get told every other day that something else is bad for us that was good for us and was good for, you know, was bad and now is good we should have i think more. nutrition what yeah I, I do i do think nutrition wise we we have a big problem though like people just don't really know what what food is good for you and we i mean i think the intake in my, my personal opinion is the intake in sugar of everybody in this world especially in young people is probably mm. us up in more ways than mm. none not yeah. just not yeah. just physical but mentally I think it could be even responsible for a lot of the rise in, in sort of uh, the, the mental health uh, sort of epidemic amongst young people. It's because the amount of sugar we're consuming, what, what? is that doing to our brains? Wired all the time, yeah. Mm, and, that's yeah. It. And, and and not being able to, uh, no, kind of a, a young age differentiate between a, a sugar crash and you yeah. know, not enough. The pressure. I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah i i think society i think diet i think so much plays into it and all we can do is try and make a few little changes every so often just to try and keep us ticking along um and also something that we, we spoke about earlier talk about stuff if you Okay, yes. if you if you have made the changes, haven't made the changes if you are if you're going through something whether it's physical if it's mental if it's serious, if it's not like talking about it can help people understand your situation, but it can also, you can learn from other people as well. And don't wait until you're yeah. sat in a room with, you know, six people on doing six hours worth of chemotherapy to talk about something, you know, it's men, women, children, old people, you know, just, we we need to talk more. I think awareness we is. We do, Jeff. You're bloody right. Bloody right. Um, <laughs> and that's, uh, and that's I, I think I think that's done. Everyone, right? Men, uh-huh. check your your nuts. Women, check your breasts, and also go for your cer- cervical smears as well because uh, that's creeping up on the rise again. Cervical cancer, um, and we don't need another famous person popping it just for the because this that's what really knows i'm not going to get into this now but a famous Perth person will die and people say oh or, yeah. or, or gets the diagnosis and like if i had checked then i'd be okay now and everyone yeah. starts checking themselves and they're grabbing all over and then the person passes away and and we kind of you know after six months it dies down and operates. goes away again it goes away and then, uh, you know, oh, and it, the, 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 oh, do you remember when this person died a year ago? And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, like, well, because you remember, do you remember Jade Goody when she got cervical yeah. cancer? And it was a big thing. And then it kind of it just went away. Like it was a big news thing. And then it just disappeared. You're right. Yeah. It does. There's a massive it's like a flash spike. in the pan. Yeah, yeah. It's like a flash in the pan, but it's not long lasting. It's, it's, yeah, it's not. It needs to be more long lasting. We need to adapt the way we think about not just ourselves, but each other in general, instead of just, yeah, like, it's almost like that when like something like that happens with Jade Goody, it becomes like a, 
a trend almost and it's not you're not you're not adapting your brain to think this is what we should be doing anyway you're mm-hmm. thinking oh 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 this is what this is what you know this is what's the thing at the moment this is yeah. what it's, it's just yeah. very yeah you should just be thinking like that anyway it shouldn't take someone like that to die nothing against jay goody or anything like that by the way but it shouldn't take you're right it shouldn't take like someone of high profile to die for everyone to suddenly start talking about it for three months and then stop talking about it yeah it's not yeah. it's not a pair of jeans it's your fucking health man <laughs> <laughs> and that's it yeah. that's it and you know what if two people 200 people two million people listen to this and they think oh do you know what it's not a trend it, or it is a trend, but it's a trend that goes over about 90 years, if you're lucky enough to yes. live that long. Yes. You know? Just, yeah. And gents, check check your balls. And you know lads, what? If, if lads, you're a, check your gonads. That's it. And if you're a real <laughs> friend, check your mates as well. Like, yeah. just have big... No, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I was going to go into a whole going out checking party thing, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to sour <laughs> what we've spoken about. I'm not going to dampen it. <laughs> it's, I may, I may or may not edit that bit out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, Nathan, thank you so much for your honesty and yeah. being happy to, to talk about not just the treatment, but also you know the psychological aspect, but also how people have interacted with you, what you're going through now. I hope that you know long, happy, cancer-free life. I hope people check more. I hope. I hope just everything. I mean, cancer's sh- man, and yeah. and that's the yeah, that's the slogan. That's what they should be using. And um, and you know, I, I I appreciate your honesty and being candid, and yeah, your passion for the conversation, and you know, live a long, happy life. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, look. Oh, I tell you what, yeah. Remind us of the socials again before we before we sign off. Where can we? Uh, where... Na- Nathan Eagle on everything. Everything. It was that yeah. simple. Yeah. Um, and and don't forget the How Obsessed Are You podcast as well. Oh yes, um, watch that. All the links. <laughs> watch that. <laughs> all the links will be in the bio. Also, I've got uh, on the Jeff Jones and Friends Make a Better YouTube channel. I've got the How Obsessed Are You channel linked to that uh, already. Um, Oh, so in the bio for this, I'm going to put some links to, you know, men's health and testicular cancer awareness bits because it's important. And if you don't haven't got this far, hopefully you'll ch- click the bio anyway. And, um, yeah, would have learned something and maybe changed some behaviours. So. Yeah. Until next time, then. All there is for me to say is thank you very much for listening. Uh, it's goodbye from me. I am Jeff Jones, um, if you didn't know already. And uh, thank you, Nathan. And it's goodbye from Nathan. Nathan, say goodbye, Nathan. And it's goodbye from me. I'm going to have some garlic butter chips. <laughs> <laughs>